It is uh, Monday the 14th of October, and Rachel's here, and Alf is here. Hello. Oh, so good, so nice. right. oh, <laughs> and Rachel is, um, a, a, what do they call it? They call it an established author, a great author. I think just an author is fine, just a, actually. Just an author. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm quite spiritual, so I have to keep my ego small. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking just then about how I love the fact that your whole family is involved, your children, your, your animals, everybody's involved mm. in writing the books. Yeah. And does that make a massive difference to the books? I think so. It, it, makes a, it makes my heart sore. I thought it was just brilliant if my children read my books and enjoyed them. But then when I realised how hard publishing and marketing was, being able to draw them in, give them work experience, give them first-hand experience, let them see it together, it, it enabled me to do it because I never... I'd bitten off more than I could chew, really. Publishing and marketing is really, really a lot more than writing. So, yeah, I love that. And I love my animals being in it. I've got my cats as uh, feline humanoids. My main coon is a really gorgeous warrior. Yeah, so I love all that. Oh, Sam's just been on. Sammy does oh, this show. <laughs> he writes books. Yeah. Does he? And he says, can you help me? I can indeed. Yeah, I'm happy to help anyone the way I can. I'm not brilliant, I'm not an expert, but I'm really happy with sharing anything I can and helping people. There you go, Sam. I'll sort that out for you. Don't you worry, you stay at home in your nice warm room <laughs> and I'll rent, venture out in the rain. So what is the future for you? For me, I, I'm i looking at moving to Ireland with my children. I want more land for my animals, of course, but I also want to turn it into a healing and writer's retreat. So I want people to be able to come, express themselves, especially people struggling to find time to write. I did a one week's writer's retreat in order to help me learn to, you know, I was like, is this a trilogy? No, it's not going to fit into three. Is it four? No, it's not. Oh, it's five. OK. And I would like people to come in on a healing journey because I'm also a health coach and on a writer's healing retreat. So that is where I want to get to in the future. And that means I want to be able to do more time writing, more time doing coaching and move away from IT. So that's my retirement plan. But at the moment, I'm just trying to sell more of this series so that I can get book five finished and hopefully lead to a movie. And I'm at the moment researching two books because as I said earlier, I've got a low boredom threshold. So I, I can't work on just one book. And, I, and maybe this is what stops me getting writer's block, because like my IT projects, I really enjoy jumping from one project to another. And I've learned that over the last 30 years. If one goes on hold, you start working on another, then you jump back. So I've got a really good mindset for switching on and off with different topics. So I'm working on a book called The Little Witch, which is about a spiritual alien girl. Um, I'm taking my daughter on the Orient Express, which was what she requested for payment as a narrator of the audiobooks. So we are both going to do our own Murder on the Orient Express. Um, mine will obviously have AI and Alien in there. Uh, my daughter will not. She thinks I'm really naughty for doing that. And I'm like, yes, but apart from Tom Cruise doing the AI, it's never been done. So there's still not been an alien on there. So I've got to get there first. And I was in Ireland also researching the Peaky Blinders because I come from a Peaky Blinder descendant history and I want to write a, a standalone book of an alien in the 1800s somehow getting taken in by a Peaky Blinder family. And I, so, I did enjoy that series Peaky Blinders but I loved it. There was a stage in it where I was like okay can you just get on with it? Can you just get on with it? Yeah see I, I love Killian Murphy so I, I loved it for that and he, he was Tommy Shelby in the series and my dad's a Tommy as well. And he was a gangster and hung around with all the craze and knew all of them. But to his credit, he did move us out of Birmingham. As he said, I want to get your, my family out of the sums of Birmingham. And he raised us in North Devon. And he sent me and my little sister to boarding school. So he did try to remove all that side. Right yeah. yeah. And um, in the series, The Peaky Blinders, it was really portrayed nicely. So you kind of liked Tommy Shelby and saw that he was just trying hard to, the reality was not like that they were nasty they were brutal they, it was a violent time and I did a post on it the other day and I said if you think the riots in the UK at the moment are anything to go by or anywhere else in the world in the 1800s it was pretty intense and the police were really struggling because they would just stone the police and they put razor blades in their caps and everything yeah, they, it was crazy yeah. yeah so how it was portrayed in the series was a lot sweeter than reality. <laughs> 
if you did do a film, mm. if your books did become a film, yeah. who would you want to direct it? <sighs> I'm not sure at the moment. I would like the brothers who did The Matrix, I think, more than anything. So if those guys are listening, <laughs> The Matrix was awesome and I loved your visual effects. So I, I think them. And lead role would go to? Well, there's not really a lead role. I have quadruplets, two brothers, two sisters. They're all hybrids. So it was, it's four protagonists. And because I was carrying a twin son and daughter, I wanted absolute equality. So I have two boys and two girls. They are equal. So there's no lead role. But there is a wonderful girl who her and her family met me at the Comic Con at London Excel. And she's been messaging me the last few weeks. She's an actress and she's like, please let me play Mina if ever it becomes a movie. And she's trying to talk to the movie people she knows to see if she can get any action there. Because she's like, I really want to play Mina before I'm too old because she's my favourite character. So, That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I, I thought that was really lovely. I never want anybody. I know, no, nobody ever messages me and says, "Can I do the breakfast show for you?" Ian? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So it's been great talking to you. Thank um, you. How time. can people get in contact with you? They can contact me. So I'm a little bit of a dual person um, because I, I'm Rachel Roof Holistic or Rachel Roof on some social media platforms like um, YouTube and that, or R E Lewin on TikTok. So I'm on all social media platforms either as R E Lewin or as Rachel Roof Holistic, you can look up the Children of Pisces series. Um, they are available in any bookshop and anywhere. Um, and the only thing I would ask people is try to buy from bookshops and support our high street bookshops rather than Amazon. Why Amazon? Yeah, well, it does. they do it cheaper, but they do it cheaper because they're ripping off the creators. So bookshops will take 35 to 50% off an author's book. But Amazon will take 60%, which then allows them to reduce it dramatically online. So people buy from them and not a bookshop. So if you look at um, the Children of Pisces series by R.E. Lewin, you should be able to find it anywhere. And then it should have links. You know, you'll see my Amazon profile. Yeah, I'm not saying don't go on Amazon because you can only get the audio books from there and Spotify. But to try and support local bookshops and libraries. Our libraries Wallen's are struggling. Bookshop. If it wasn't for them. Yeah, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here today. No, exactly. Been amazing. If you ever want to come back, just let me know. Okay, I've got thank my you very number much. now. Thank you, Ian. Damn, damn. <laughs> I've been cornered. Yeah. Alfie, any la last words from Alfie? Anything? Uh, no, but I'm just looking at the social media and it looks really good. Thank you. Well, we just went viral on uh, TikTok, actually. Over 14 million views on some of my latest videos. So oh, wow. we're doing better on TikTok than anywhere else. I'm finding growth elsewhere hard, but I've just done a marketing course to learn more about marketing. Um, it's it's a minefield and everyone has different views, but I think I'm I'm close to mastering it. The fact that I've just gone viral tells me I am. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult to get your name out there, though. It's really hard. It's a saturated market. And even traditional publishers who are publishing authors, they're not selling books. People are really broke at the moment and inundated with the cost of books and everything. So I've tried to keep my audio books really low cost. They're under a fiver. Whereas they're normally 20 or 30 pounds for an audio book. But although that would probably never pay me back, I wanted it available for escapism and education in this hard world that children are growing up in. So I want people to escape free. And I've kept the ebooks low as well because I want people to enjoy it. And if people can't afford it, ask your library to get a book in. Any books you want, ask. People are forgetting this. But if they aren't, go to their library and say, I'd like to read this book, can't afford it. Well, you don't even have to tell them that. Can you get these books in for me? Libraries are there being used. For that reason, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so people are forgetting and not using the library. Go use your library. Go <laughs> use your library and the local bookshop. Yes, sir. yes. Rachel, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Elfie. Speak, Thanks, speak again soon.